All right, starting Blended Life podcast number two in three, two, one. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of The Blended Life. I am Eric, and this is my wife, Julie. Hey, you guys. Um, tonight, we're actually going to dive right in to our topic. Um, that is the progression of dating with kids. Right. It was something that was suggested on our Instagram. It's a good one. Yeah, so I thought this was perfect. Yeah. Very relatable. All right, so I thought that we would very quickly mm-hmm. talk about our story because I think our story, while it's not romantic, we have the least romantic story in the history of Yeah, it's not stories. your romance novel. At all. Means. But the point is, is that while it wasn't all cupcakes and flowers and roses and romance, it right. was we built a very strong foundation. And I would take that over the other any day. Yeah, it's been awesome so far. Yeah. So our friendship, our relationship started out as a friendship first. And I think that's super important that everyone who's dating with kids needs to hear. Right. Because your kids are going to see your friendship. Oh, before we get started, this just cues me off. (laughs) Since I really poop face emoji the bed last week. (laughs) No, on I last don't. Week's no. Game. no. This week's game. This is going to take up too much time. It won't. So throughout this podcast as we go, last week I noticed something that when we were talking about our children, a lot of times I was referring to them as my kid, my child. You're referring to them as your kids, your child, right? Your children. Well, in a blended family, we've learned that They need to become our children, right? So throughout this episode, as we refer to our kids as my kid, we are going to turn on our shocky toy. And we're going to shock ourselves. This is so stupid. It's better than last week's game, right? You're the world's worst game maker. Wanna Ever. Play? You want to play right now? No. Come on. I don't want to play. I opt oh. out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on with your story. <laughs> that hurts so bad. That was all the way up. <laughs> We're actually covered. How do I turn it off? <laughs> Okay. No, okay. Like, I peed my pants a little bit. That okay. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Think I'm just come off. Stop. Okay. Really, them crying my makeup off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Girl, I'm seriously, the I'm worst. Gonna to <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that so much. <laughs> Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> I might be the worst at games. <laughs> You're the worst at games, and I'm not playing your game. Okay, before I rudely <laughs> interrupted you. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? I think friendships. <laughs> building friendships. <laughs> That's not the way to do it. Yeah, that was shocking. Uh, I couldn't let go of that thing. It hung on. Nice. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, friendships. I think that we bonded because our marriages fell apart at the same time. Right. And so I think when we met and started talking, we were in no position and weren't looking. I never thought I was going to get married again. I was like, clearly, marriage is not for me. Right. And at that time, I was was fighting a full uphill battle for my marriage. Yeah, when I met you, you were still really trying to keep it together. I was. I was trying to keep our family yeah. together. We had a lot of issues. Yeah. And um, I just believed in marriage. And I just, I wasn't willing to let go at that point. 
and um, building a friendship was fine, fine, but I was looking for nothing romantic at that time. Yeah, clearly you weren't at all ever yeah. even giving a hint of that, right? which made me feel safe. It okay. made me feel safe to be able to open up to you right? because, A, I knew you could relate to me. Mm-hmm. And I just felt, I've always felt, and I think one of the things that I love about you now and valued then was that you just make me feel safe. Oh, shocking. <sighs> It's amazing that yeah. we have romance at all. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I think the point of that was friendship first. Right. When you're dating with kids, um, I know it's super easy to get physically attracted first. You get this romance, you're dating, yeah. and that's all fine and good. But one thing that was missing from my first marriage was that friendship piece. I had never been friends with anyone before you. Yeah, I don't think I had either. I just jumped into dating. I mean, my ex and I were friends. You were friends for a long time. But we weren't as close. You know, we were great friends for a long, long period of time. But you and I built Mm -hmm. a best friend friendship right off the bat. Yeah, and I think that we saw each other in our darkest hour. Yeah. And so because of that, I think you've seen me at my worst. Yeah, and that was rock bottom of <laughs> my life. We led with our absolute worst, mm-hmm. disastrous life. And so there was no surprise when we, I don't even, do you remember when we made that turn from friendship to romance? No, I feel like it took a long time. A really long time. But yeah. I don't remember. One spark or one moment where it was like, aha. Yeah, we had no spark. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's the truth. Okay. Moving on. So I think that's super important. Friendship first. And really just try to make that foundation. If you guys, especially if you're dating with kids, you should be dating for a future. Right. Right. I really don't think you should be dating for. Pleasure. Well, or if you are, you keep that outside of your home, outside of your kids' lives. Right. You know, you can date for pleasure, but your kids should never know you are. Yeah. You don't bring that person around. They don't know where mommy and daddy is. You save it for the days that aren't your days. Right. You know, that's perfectly fine. But I think when you're talking about dating and having your children at all part of that, Mm -hmm. you need to really be focused on I'm dating for. Well, looking at that person for the future. Yeah. Is this person going to be right for me? And am I right for this person? In the big picture, is this person right? For my children, am I right for their children? Is this going to work? Can I put up with that child, with their children, long term? Because some people can't. I have friends. I love my friends dearly. Their children are another thing. You know? Yeah. Well, that's a really interesting topic and probably a whole nother topic we could talk about. Yeah. Because I think that... You can't force relationships. And I think that's one of my notes here. Okay. Is when you're dating with kids... One another important thing is you can't force relationships with anyone. Right. So you can't expect the kids to all be best friends. That's right. You can't force yourself to love and connect with my kids or, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to let it naturally progress. You totally do. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that natural progression. Yeah. But also on that same note, um, since... I would assume most of us and most of, you know, we are, but most of our viewers are blended families already is that you have to be willing to pursue that relationship with a child in order for that relationship to progress. It doesn't normally just happen right off the bat. There has to be a little bit of work. Well, but I've talked to a lot of people. Okay. And those relationships do happen. I mean, there are a lot of relationships with kids that just naturally start off great or bad yeah you know you usually get one or the other either you're connecting or you're not right I will say for um my situation with your son Mm -hmm. you know it's been lukewarm right it's taken a long time but it hasn't been I can't stand him or I'm in love with him right you know it hasn't been one or the other it has just kind of been on both of our ends Mm -hmm. wah 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 yeah I agree and that's okay. Yeah. And I think that when you're dating with kids, if you're looking for, you need to adjust your expectations 
a little bit and mm-hmm. not be so starry eyed. Yeah. And so set the bar in un, un you know unobtainable heights right. that you can't possibly reach or the kids can't. Mm-hmm. Kids are their own people. Right. Outside of you. Yes. So when do you think it is appropriate to introduce kids to someone you're dating? I mean, I guess there's not like a s- formula of this amount of days after you meet and after this, but I mean, when? My thought on it is when you know that you and this other person are going to be together for a while, you know that this is something um, that you guys have a future in, right? And this person's not going anywhere anytime soon. You guys don't have those issues where, eh, we're talking one week, we're not talking another. You know, I text them one night, they're not texting me another. Um, There's consistency going on. I think we talked about it in last week's show. Mm -hmm. And that consistency carries on through your relationship. And you guys um, are building a bond that you know deep down in your heart, I'm not going anywhere, and I feel that this person's not going anywhere. Right. And um, don't do it just once, you know hey, we're going to start moving in together today. Hey, you guys, this is your new stepmom, your new stepdaddy, you know? Daddy. Daddy. Um, Start by, you know, doing little park dates. That was what we did. That's what we did. Exactly. And we got the kids to kind of know each other and learn each other and want to hang out with each other. And you also kind of see how your kids interact with each other, right? Yeah. Um, So two words that go together when you're dating with kids. Right. (laughs) It's not only dates, but it is play dates. Play dates. It's a a lot of play dates and not where you're all going together in one car yeah. and meeting at each other's houses, but you set it up exactly like a friend, like you would meet another girlfriend or another one of your buddies with kids up yeah. at a park or you guys go, you meet there because you want to take all of the pressure out of the situation. Yeah. Start it slow and start in small increments. Don't start off your first play date as... A weekend camping trip. Right, a weekend camping trip. Or even, hey, we're going to go to the park in the morning, and then we're going to do the movies in the afternoon, then we're going to have dinner, and then mommy or daddy and their new best friend are going to hang out all night while us kids have a sleepover. We're going to fall asleep on the couch and pretend we don't know what's going on elsewhere. Yeah. Start off slow. Yeah. Start off with quick, you know, half hour, hour, you know, no more than two hour long little trips because your kids are adapting to all this too your kids world has been changed around them yeah it's a whirlwind yeah and they are there your kids are when you're single and you're out of a marriage and their household has been broken up they are spinning and they are looking for anything concrete to hold on to right and so it's super important that's just such excellent advice Mm -hmm. because you have to take it slow and know that you have the rest of your lives to be together Right. There's no rush. I think that's one thing um, that's really important and different when you're dating after divorce mm-hmm. and dating with kids. You have this level of maturity that you did not have before. When you went into your previous relationship or marriage, right? Right. You're a little bit more cautious. You're a little bit more worn. You know, you have trust issues. You're just not so... You're a little bit jaded, which is not a bad thing. And another new thing that you have that you didn't have probably before you went into this last relationship is you now have a child or children that you're bringing in to another relationship and that you have to be hypersensitive about. Yeah. It's not about you anymore. Again, talked about that in last week's episode, but you now have lives that you need to put above yours. Right. And we'll probably keep saying this in every episode. It needs to be about the kids. Absolutely. You know, until they're 18. Or you could do like Dr. Laura does. Mm -hmm. She says, do not date. Really? Until your kids are 18 and out of the house. What's the basis for that? She says that because blended families or second marriages with kids have a 70% divorce rate. Right. So... I mean, chance, like, are your kids worth risking? Right. You know, your kids have, or you've already upturned their life once. Mm-hmm. Is it worth r- that huge? I mean, that's a huge number, right? Is it, are your kids worth that risk? Yeah, 70%. That's huge. Right. And so she just feels like your job, your first job mm-hmm. is to raise your children. I agree. And that is your first job. 
your job is not to date. Your job is not to be romantic. Your job is not to, you know, have any other focus, really. And I think it's, you know. Yeah, I kind of, I mean. I she's agree. the Dave Ramsey of. Um, of dating. Dating. Yeah. Um, or d- divorce dating. Yeah. <laughs> and dating with kids. Yeah. And same thing. I think there's some extremes involved in that. I think that there's a time and a place to date. I don't think it's while your children are sleeping in bed and you're dating in the living room. You know, I think it's when the children are at the other parent's house or, you know, they have a sleepover at grandma and grandpa's or, you know, just one of their good friends. But um, do it on your time, on your personal time. Yeah. And don't give up all your personal time or, or all your time with your children to make that personal time because everyone knows dating's, you know, the fun part the of relationships, right? That's the part where... You get all the fun feelings and, you know, it's all, it's all new and it's all fun. Unless things. you're us. Unless you're us. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. Keep your children above all else. Yeah. And on your free time, date. Start slowly. Go from there. Yeah. And I think that you have to have an outlet. You know, I think your happiness and kind of what we talked about last week as well, mm-hmm. you know, your moods and your happiness and your your level of self-care reflects in your parenting. So right. if you're miserable and you're not getting needs met, yeah. you know, if you need a friend and you just don't have that, yeah. your kids are going to see this sad, depressed, unfed, un, you know, your needs not met. It will affect how you parent them. So it's a fine line, too, between making sure that your needs are met. Yeah. And putting your kids first, it's a constant, I mean, blended family or not, I think that's a constant tightrope. We all walk as parents. Right. Well, something you just said triggered something in my mind too. Um, When you are dating someone new, you know, your your children are feeding off of all of this and they're seeing your emotions and, and they're feeling what you're feeling just because our children are little sponges, again, talked about last week. Um, But while you're building this new relationship, don't build a relationship upon your past and putting down your ex and being miserable. Don't find, uh, what's the word for it, where you're codependent on one another. Um, but that's kind of tricky because I feel like we bonded over that. A little bit. However, I didn't sit there and badmouth my ex to you constantly and let you badmouth her back and vice versa. We would talk to each other about situations where it would have been very easy to get sucked down that rabbit hole. Yeah. But we helped one another. We weren't looking at the past and what was happening in all these situations that were happening. We were talking each other through them, and we were getting over them. We were building bridges for one another. That is absolutely correct. Right? And I think that one thing that is different with us mm-hmm. is we have never bad-mouthed our right. children's parents. Right. Um, in reverse, let me correct that. I bitch about my Mm ex-husband. You bitch about your ex-wife. Right. But I don't jump on that bandwagon and bitch with you about your ex-wife. You don't jump on the bandwagon and cuss about my ex-husband. We... We build bridges for one another. We help each other get over that. Yeah. And and I think that's a big... That's part of our foundation, and I think that's something to look for in someone who you're dating, not someone who's going to sit there and fuel that fire. You that's know, right. F- Feed the negativity. Exactly. It's not helpful. No, because, again, again, going back to last week, your children pay attention to all this stuff, and if all you have is negativity in your household and right. all you have is negativity in your relationship, all your children are going to know is negativity. Well, and if you're bonding over negativity yep what kind of marriage do you think you're going to end up having absolutely you know if you're if you're bonding over i'm broken Mm -hmm. you know help me find the glue right so that i can put myself back together if that's what's going on yeah then that's amazing so what do you think are some things that people with kids need to consider when they start when they're ready to date Mm -hmm. or they're wanting to date what are things that they need to figure out and consider? I mean, I guess 
with themselves. So again, and with the going other person. back to dating previously, um, before maybe your marriage or relationship to dating now, um, things change as we mature. Politics change. Um, I didn't really have a political um, guideline or sense when I initially got married. Um, religion matters, right? So if religion matters to you, if politics matter to you, find your core values. Find what you think that um, represent you, represent you and your children, and um, find someone who meets the same criteria, right? Don't yeah. find someone who, you know, you're on one side of a political party and they're on the other side because it's all fun and games at the beginning until that spark wears off, right? And now all of a sudden you guys are on two sides, two, two totally opposite sides. And same thing with religion, you know. And vaccinations. Um, and vaccinations. That's a whole other topic, <laughs> right? That's really kind of only the one thing that Julie and I don't necessarily see eye to eye on, right? Yeah. But it's not a deal breaker. Well, we, we're, we're not having kids together. Yeah. That might be a different story if we had kids together. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a whole other thing we could talk about. But stuff as simple as vaccination, right? Yeah. Um. So find out things that matter to you. Well, and I think that's a beautiful thing. I didn't. I just totally cut you off. That's okay. But w one one advantage, mm -hmm. I think that we are so advantaged when we are dating with kids. Absolutely. We are armed with so much more knowledge, so much more experienced. Mm -hmm. um, we should be so much better at it because we know ourselves better. You learn so much about yourself. Can I get yeah. an amen yeah. when you go through a divorce? Right. Um, you learn a ton and you're less willing to settle. Right. So I think you that you should be less willing to settle. Oh, if don't you're go not, out there looking do not for date. that. Yeah. Don't go out there looking for that perfect Ken doll or that perfect Barbie doll, um, that just fits one of your criterias, right. you know, or go have fun with them when yeah. your kids are at a different it's house. Like, it's like, it's, or, the, well, you know, it's really, it's like house. buying a second house. You've bought your first house, right? You know, you, you at first it was all. Great. You were just excited to have a house. You were excited to have a house. This is it's a like great a analogy. Marriage. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm the analogy guy. I'm just deeming myself that now. Um, so you've got your first house. Yeah. Um, but maybe it only had single pane windows and you want those dual panes. Yeah. You would, you would grow that house. Yeah. And that, and that skylight, you know, you want skylights, you know, you want, you want taller ceilings, whatever it might be. Right. Look for that stuff in the next person. Don't make it all superficial though. Again, look for... Well, it's values. interesting to hear a man talk like this. I'm a real boy. Quite frankly, because women, I think, are very, you know, I said this last time, mm -hmm. I've, women fall in love between their ears. Right. You know, men are very visual. They're very, mm -hmm. you know. Superficial. Not superficial, no. but they're, they hear attraction comes from what they see. Right. And women, attraction okay. usually comes from what they hear. Right. Okay. So the ugliest guy can get the hottest girl because he is telling her exact, <laughs> sorry, whatever, but he's telling her exactly what she wants to hear. Right. So, and guys are just enamored with like. Looks. Hourglass shape <laughs> and, you know, whatever it might right. be. So it's interesting to hear you talk about this. I wonder if guys really sit there after divorce and think really self-reflect like what did I do wrong and what am I going to do differently right. well I think you just said it um self-reflecting really taking the time um but slowing down and just praying about it and just putting thought and time into prayer and don't go out immediately just looking for the next person you know give yourself people, time to grieve your marriage well you know what and, and, and you know again your if, you're, family. if you're religious let God do the work mm. Let, let it be on his time and don't go out there shopping at the bars, you know, shopping at the malls, what, how, however it is, whatever your place, uh, you know, to go is, mm -hmm. don't spend time there looking for people immediately. Let it just happen. You'll meet someone and it might be in the weirdest place, you know, it might be in the weirdest circumstances. Um, again, our, our story wasn't super romantic. It's nothing that I ever would have assumed this is going to bring me my next wife and this is going to fulfill all my needs and my happiness. Right? No, not at all. So just take yeah. your time. Let it happen. You know, don't go shopping. 
Did you have a point where you knew you were ready to date after you got divorced? I didn't. It slowly it slowly happened. And and real quickly talking on that subject, these dating sites, all the new age dating sites, you know, I think a lot of them are crock. You know, it's it's window shopping. Is really what it is. You know, you're you've got your your phone or your tablet there and you're nope, nope, nope. It's Ooh, because everyone wants that, it easy. That one looks nice, right? Right. That one's pretty. I'm going to, you know, send a message, whatever. You know, it's all it is is window shopping. <laughs> yeah, I think dating sites are, you know, it's a new age we live in, definitely right. different than when right. we were kids. Everything's if, online and social media. Yeah, but if you care enough, set yourself apart, step back, and just let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're um, dating with kids, it is super important that you talk so much. You know, I remember you and I would, in the progression of us dating with kids, um, we hung out a lot beforehand, before we introduced our kids. Obviously, We went on a lot of walks. Right. Is that what you're getting at? We just spent time, all hours of the day and night, Mm -hmm. going on walks and talking. Right. You know, we had no, uh, we didn't have our phones out. We didn't have a TV or a movie screen in front of us. We didn't have other people around us. We did not Netflix and chill. Netflix? Netflix. Nice. Um, Yeah, we just spent time talking. Mm -hmm. And I think that that gets lost a lot in this new day and age where you're just texting and all of that. So I would say that. It gives you time to connect and build a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. All right. I have a couple questions. Uh-oh. Things that I've really thought about um, in regards to this subject. Take me out of the equation. Okay. Take me and my kids out of the equation. Oof, I'm single again. You're single again. Dang it. You're single again. Okay. That's a lot of work. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a weird gray area to be in. Yeah. That's a place I didn't love being. Um, right. We're built for relationships. And you come out of a relationship, whether you wanted to or not. And that's a weird place to be because now all of a sudden you're single again and you have your freedom and you can go any direction with that. It's just a weird You can place eat to whatever you want for dinner. I know. Thank you. It is kind of wonderful for all you single people out there. Mm-hmm. It is lovely to yeah. eat what you want. Meals just got cheaper because you only buy them for one. Right. Unless you have kids with you. Food's expensive. Anyways. I interrupted Amen. you, sorry. So I think there are two sides to dating, you know, if you've been married or not, if you have kids or not. Right. Um, and I think the answer is, is just nothing's perfect. It's all going to be work. Yeah. And you really, if you're dating someone who has never been married before mm-hmm. and does not, and or does not have kids. Right. You need to also understand that they aren't going to be able to relate to you. Yeah. That's a, a lot, great point. and they're not going to be able to understand what it's like to have an ex spouse mm-hmm. and having to deal with an ex spouse, and they may not understand that you need to constantly deal right. with your ex spouse. You know, they might get jealous. Like, why do you always have to talk to your ex? Yeah, you know, because they're immature. They just have they it. Just don't understand it. Yeah, they can't. And yeah. they and to 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 have the expectation that somebody understands something they've never been through, Mm -hmm. it's not right. They can't possibly. And so that would just be something I would say, beware of. Yeah. That's great advice. So, and and keep those children first. Don't let that, don't let that come above all just because this other person doesn't have kids and you can have so much fun with this person going out and doing what you do, you know, being a college student again, so to say. Even college students grow up. Even college students grow up and put your children first. Yeah. Be good parents. Be good parents. Yeah. Um, do you remember how you reacted when you found out your ex was dating? Ooh. Um, I mean, you found out while no, you were but, married, No, but that was kind of that was kind of one of those things that happened right off the bat on 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 on, you know. Yeah. So I can't really answer to that but no I mean everything about it was not great it was yeah awful. that was a stupid question for me to ask actually okay it's I not, remember I mean, when stupid, well I, I remember when you know I think yeah. that's something that you consider too is but like how do you let your at how did how does your ex find out that you've moved on and dated? yeah but to play off of what you just said mm-hmm. just because your ex is out dating whether you're all right with it or not 
don't let that be a challenge for you to go out and one up your ex and be like, right. oh, well, they just found someone new. I'm going to go find someone new and I'm going to make my ex jealous. Right. Don't be that person because it's not about your ex. And right? yeah, now you're making it into a game. And really, I feel like dating should be serious when Absolutely. you're dating. Absolutely. You know, you're dating for marriage yeah. and you take it seriously. It's not a game. Yeah. It's not a joke. You know, so you need to be serious about it. So progression of dating okay. with kids. When do you feel like it's appropriate to move in together? And this is another quick, you know, another question. We're a Christian right. family. Right. And so I think that um, it's looked down a, a, upon a lot. Yeah. Blended families are, are not so... But as being Christians, encouraged. Well, I you we know you yeah, have failure under your belt. Yeah, yeah, we we moved in together before we were married, and that's it. Do you think that you move in together before you're married, or do you wait until you get married and move yeah. in together? And then when do you know it's right to do either? That's a tough one. Um, when did you know? And because you you think okay, when my kids are this age and they're going through this type of thing, if they just move in with a boyfriend or girlfriend, how am I going to feel about that? Right. And we're so, we contradict everything we say and do, right? The way we feel. But I think you really just need to dig down deep inside and ask yourself: Is this the right thing? Is this the right thing for um, my children? Is this the right thing for their children, our children, right? And if you're going to move in together, make sure that it's one of those things like, okay, we have future plans to get married. I know we're going to get married one day. You should not be having sleepovers if you don't think that's where it's going. Right, absolutely. And so I would say keeping in keeping on topic. Okay. You know, I know what we did, so we'll just do we'll say what we did because right. I think everyone's very different. Absolutely. I think at the end of the day you know. Right. And if you have any sort of gut feeling or second guessing going on, then you don't do anything until you know. Right. There's no one that's forcing you to do anything. No, that's great advice. So, but for us, I think, you know, we got, we got serious eventually. I couldn't tell you when. Yeah. It was very <laughs> gradual. I don't know. Um, but we did have sleepovers. Right. You know, it, you know, we had a sleepover here or there and. Did we with the kids? We did with the kids. Did we? Yeah. See, this is all, it's a blur to me. It's a blur to you. Yeah. Because we just. We didn't have those moments where it was like, aha, aha, you know, those aha moments. We didn't have them. It was so gradual. And again, because we built a friendship so, you know, it was so long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and our kids were friends. We were all friends. And so it wasn't yeah. when that happened, our kids weren't like, who is this? Yeah. This person's coming into our territory. Well, and there wasn't multiple people like coming that. into the territory at the time. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, we weren't multi-dating, you know. We weren't hanging out with lots of different people and confusing the children. And our kids didn't know, didn't know you. Our kids, my kids, didn't know you as my boyfriend. Right. Yeah. We were just all friends. Right. You know, and then I think kids, kids aren't stupid. Right. You know, they they obviously know what marriage is. They see romance. They see connection. They see spark. Yeah, and they so recognize it. they recognize it. So I don't think you need to go around labeling everything too. Right. Okay. You know, and letting yeah. things. I think you put a lot of pressure on the kids when you start using boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance. You know. Yeah. And there is and a time and place for that. And fiance PDA, and husband, but public display of affection. Keep that to a minimum, right? Especially in front of the kids. You know, yeah. don't go. They're going to be uncomfortable with it well, at yeah, first. Don't go making okay. out at the park, you know, or in the movies with your kids sitting My right next favorite. to you. favorite. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but really, though, right? Um, yeah, I think you need to let the friendship form and let your kids see you being friends. Just take everything And that makes slow. it safe. I right. think friendship's really, really safe. Obviously, dating for kids is not safe. Right. You know, because they already have a broken home. So they're not going to really trust somebody else coming in mm -hmm. and giving it a go because it didn't work out. Right. But friendships, kids learn, are more sturdy. Yeah. So I think that you give your kids a safer place to accept everyone if you just keep it friendships. But to to get back to what we were talking about, 
you know, we did have sleepovers. And then what actually ended up happening is you guys just never left. Yeah. We never, I mean, to be honest, we never had a conversation about we're moving in. And, right. you know, it was just one of those things like sleepovers just kept continuously like it, you know, it just. Yeah. It just happened. We didn't have a lot of big discussions. We didn't make everything such a big deal. It you just know, sl- yeah, it slowly progressed. It and slowly progressed. And the kids were fine. You know, the kids were fine with it. I never had any of the kids come to us and be like, what's going on? Yeah. What's happening? And I think when you make things a big deal, then you're making them a big deal. Right. And yeah. And the children recognize it as a big deal. And they're trying to wrap their little minds around it. Yeah. So not everything needs to be waving a flag in the air. Right. And making announcements of what's happening. You right. know, I think that doing that is alarming when kids just need to see through action that life's okay. Yeah. Now, we're talking from our perspective and our children were, what, two, five or six, eight, 12, you know. Yeah. Um, what about parents that are, um, that have children that are a lot older? You know, what if you have children that are in junior high, high school? I think it's harder. And they can stay home by themselves at night, you know. They, oh, I don't. Mo- they're more independent. What do you feel about that? Yeah, I think if it's, I think if it's your night with your kids, it's your night with your kids. And I think you need to still respect that and at just any do it age. the same way. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, going back to the play date thing, you're not going to take new boyfriend, new girlfriend <laughs> to a play date, right? With a, with a 16 year old. No, but there are barbecues. There are barbecues. There are beaches. Yeah. There's hiking. Okay. You know, there's different activities so slowly, that you can do. Slowly introduce them. Small yes, times. Again, meet there in different cars. Yeah. You know, don't, don't all go together. Don't, Hey, we're meeting at our house right. and then we're all driving there together, you know? Um, and then talk to your children. I think kids are very forgiving if there's communication. Well, they're you know? intuitive too. They see, they see around what's actually going on. You know, you're so blindsided and, you know, and narrow minded towards right. this person. Um, you know, you've got blinders on towards them. Um, talk to your children, you know, and if they get a weird feeling from this person, like, oh, man, they're really a rude person or they don't treat you well. You right. Know, listen to your children. Sometimes they'll just be brats and tell you, you know, what's on their mind at the time. But you know, if your children's being your child's being genuine, genuine about something. Yeah. Um, and if they're being genuine about it, listen to them. Yeah. You know? and well, and I think unless you're raising horrible humans, right, your kids want you to be happy. Absolutely. It's only better for them, you right. know, especially teenagers. If they have happy parents, they get away with so much more. Right. <laughs> Right. Right. So I think that your kids, if they see that you're genuinely happy and again, the thing with older kids too, you cannot force anything. So you really need to be okay with lukewarm connections. Yeah. You really need to be okay with, I mean, blended families are not ideal. So all your idealism needs to go out the window. Right. You know, and you need to really adjust your expectations for everyone involved. Um, so here's, um, social media. Okay. Everyone puts their stuff on social media. They do. And so talked about last week. Yeah. But when you're dating and the progression of dating, I know it's super tempting and it's something that we struggled with a whole lot. Yeah. Because you're in love, you're happy, you're dating and you want to shout it from the rooftops. Right. That's me. That's you. You're very different. A hundred percent opposite of that. Um, you guys, he would not take a picture with me for almost a year because he did not want the wrath of what that picture would cause for well, him and his child. if you listen to last week's episode, though, yep. one of my funny instances of something I was doing um, got used against me terribly. And when we were in court, and mind you, I was trying to be the best father, the best ex-husband that I could be. I was trying to do everything right. And granted, I wasn't perfect, but I was trying very hard and every single thing that I would do would get used against me. So as much as I could keep off social media, and I even got to the point to where, yeah, we talked for a while and that's how we actually reconnect. You and I connected on Facebook, but I actually deleted my Facebook. I got rid of it because I'm like, this, is, this isn't worth it. 
You know, I care too much about my child and my relationship that I'm just, I can't do, I can't deal with this. Right. Yeah. I think that's a very, very, very good thing that everyone needs to hear is you need to respect each other. Yeah. And that was really, really hard for me because I just felt that you were ashamed of me. Right. Or Which wasn't the case at all. But yeah, I think that that's another thing to consider when you're dating, you know, um, and if you're dating someone with kids and they're very leery about professing your relationship, right? be kind of understanding that it probably has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with their situation or their children and you don't know them well enough yet to care if you don't know. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Um. So something that a lot of people deal with when you're dating with kids are all the rumors and speculations. And, you know, I, we're in a small town here. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of, because we were friends first, yeah. there was a lot of rumors about, you know, that we had had an affair. But some by people we didn't even know, or I personally didn't know, you personally didn't know. It was pretty wild, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so... When Which, it was actually the complete opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very long before anything romantic happened at all. So I think that's something, too, that, you know, when you date with kids and there's an ex involved, the rumors. What do you do? What do you tell people to do about the rumors that surround dating? Do you address them head on? Do you ignore them? You know. I think the best thing that we did and this is just from our situation, mm -hmm. I think the best thing that we did is didn't try to fight them. People are going to think and people are going to say what they want to think and say. It's like trying to convince one person in a political party to take the side of someone else in a political party or someone has a feeling on the, it. It's someone's feelings. It's someone's thoughts. They're going to stick to them usually. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you don't need to prove yourself to anyone. As long as you can lay your head on your pillow at night and right. you can go to sleep and wake up the next morning feeling confident that you're doing things the best that you can, that's really all that matters. As long as your children are taken care of, you feel like you're doing things great, that's all that matters. For sure. Yeah. And the only time I think that I got involved with that, because your children hear everything. Right. So the problem is, is when your kids are at, friends houses and they overhear adult conversations or they're at school and their friends parents were talking and so that gets back to them when the kids start hearing these rumors and it's affecting your children and it's affecting your children right. I think you have an obligation to get involved at that point yeah and don't don't let your kids well don't let your kids think bad about you if it's wrong right and I think that that's a lot of what was really hard for me yeah. with all this. But it's not constantly having to stand up for yourself. It's just having to make sure that your children are protected. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. And I was lucky because obviously we did not have an affair. Right. That wasn't the case at all. And the kids knew that. Yeah. I mean. Well, they were around the whole time. <laughs> yeah. They lived the same life I, we were living. Right. Um, And so... While, yes, things could have been inappropriate behind closed doors, they weren't. Right. You know, and um, I think your children, as long as you're living your truth, will know that. They know you. Right. And you need to trust that. All right. So, you guys are, so living together before yeah. you get married, I personally think if you have a blended family, it's a good test run. Yeah. So, okay. but, so you're living together, mm -hmm. let's say, and it's time to get engaged. Yeah. How do you think you, because engagement's a big deal, yeah. and I feel like that you need to tell, your your ex needs to know that there right. is now a step-parent coming into the situation. Yeah. How do you think you tell, how, you know, how did you find out, for instance, that your ex was getting remarried? Um, I found out through, I found out through the children. I think, I think the children came home and told me, and. Um, was that okay, or would you rather have heard it from her firsthand? You know, some people would, some people wouldn't. That was fine with me. I don't... Did you know it was coming? 
Yeah, you kind of feel it coming too, you know. And I think. Um, and they had a kid. They had a kid previous First. to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So y- y- you know, so then at that point, you're kind of like, all right, I guess that's you know. Yeah, I found out, out in mediation. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was fun. That's right. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend being in a legal situation and dropping that bomb. Make sure when that time comes that you have a respectful exchange yeah, that's and it, let respect. Let them know that this is happening. That there's and out of just that there's another parent entering the situation that's yeah. going to affect everything. Remember, at that point too, you are no longer in a relationship with that person. So be respectful. But you don't need their opinion on it. You don't need to sit there and listen to what they have to say or have them critique that person. Just let them know. That's it. That's true. It doesn't even need to be a conversation. It doesn't need to be a conversation. It can be you write a letter. It can be a quick phone call. Hey, I have a couple sec. You have a couple seconds. Yeah. I just need to let you know. But just be that respectful I'm engaged. About it. Yeah. yeah, and that the kids, you know, because it, they're going to also need to know if the kids are acting out in their home. Right. It could be because something's changing. Absolutely. And that's normal. Yeah. You know. To some degree. Um, One thing I want to say about dating and then getting, you know, living together, engaged, getting married, that people need to understand is there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Like for me, there was so much grooming, and that might be a really icky word to use, but I'm going to use it because there was so much making my kids okay with it. There were so many conversations I had apart from you, apart from your children. Okay. That was just, there was so much behind the scenes. That's what I mean. Behind the scenes of work. Yeah. To make my kids okay and feel comfortable and safe and and no pressure. And I think that when you're dating, you can't forget to do that work behind the scenes if you want it to last. You need to have those conversations with your kids. You need to pull your kids aside from the dating situation even when you're getting married and all that too, you need to constantly reconnect with your kids away right? and talk to them about the person you're dating, the person you're marrying, you know, get, let them know it's okay right? to like them. But it's hard because kids can come between couples. So if you have kids who are held defiant and manipulative, yeah, who don't want this to happen, right? Truly. And truly hate the person you're marrying, right? Your marriage will probably fall apart. Yeah, because it'll suffer constantly. Because to you're going to constantly be in the middle of having to pick your spouse, right, or your child, and either way, you're you're damned. Right. You're There's no win situation, and Absolutely. that's no way for you to live. No. As a human, you know, you don't, and it's probably not a right fit. Right. So. Be cognizant of that. I mean, there's there might be some pushback. Right. That's normal. Kids are adjusting. Yeah. And that's really hard. But you need to know when to say when. Right. And when to walk away. That was my point. Yeah. So last week we talked about. You have no other games? No other games. <laughs> Just want to make sure because we're, yeah. we're here near the end I'll have, and you've I'll only have been shocked one. once. I'll have a new one next <laughs> week for us. No props, um, please. <laughs> so last week you talked about a movement. You talked about a movement. I talked about a movement, but it's your movement. It's so f- that's all I think is bowel movement when you say that oh, word. <laughs> that's okay. Old people have movements. That's yeah. what they're called. Well, let's talk about yours. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it was interesting because when I was when I, we were talking about blended life in the beginning, right? So I want us to all be a people who's who's every like. All of us blended family Kay. adults. Yeah. I want us to be flashlight people. <laughs> okay, explain <laughs> this. You've talked about it before, and I think yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. But wrap our heads around I it. I want a flashlight people movement. And What's what that, that mean? means is I think we're all walking a path, and I think that when we get divorced and we face those hard times, our lights all kind of naturally turn off. Okay. It can be very dark. Yeah. And it's really hard in blended family with stepkids. It can get very dark. It can be very, very isolating. It yeah. can get very lonely. Yeah. And so I think what we need to do is light the way for each other. Right. You know, we are all in this together. And so the flashlight people movement is kind of like turning on your flashlight, pointing it to the ground so that someone else can see and they don't fall. Yeah. 
I love it. And if we all point our flashlights to the ground and light the path, I think we can absolutely destroy the 70% divorce rate for blended families. I think it's... That's ridiculous. Bullshit. Yeah. I cussed. Yeah. So that's the flashlight people movement. I love it. I want to get flashlights made. I want to all meet on top of a mountain in the middle of the night and point our flashlights and... You know, I, I want shirts. I mean, it's just a movement. How about coffee mugs? With flashlights, though. Okay. We need flashlights. Flashlight Light up movement. Mugs. Flashlight people. Yeah. Hashtag. Well, I love so, it. So. Okay. That's kind of. Coming soon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have to, f- we have to get shirts let designed. Us know what, let if us know you, what guys you guys have any designs. Yeah, let us know what you think of that, too. That's kind of cool. I mean, really, people. Yeah, I'm curious to see what people Shiny, think about that. Shiny, happy people holding hands oh my gosh, with flashlights. Again. With flashlights. Yeah. Let us w- know what you guys think about that, though. Comment below. Yeah. And um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about her her movement. My that's, <laughs> movement. That's all, that's all you. I had no input on that. That was 100%. You should have seen his face when I told him this. Yeah, but I... <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? Because it takes about? a second to wrap your mind around it, but I think it's I think it's awesome. I think it's such an awesome thing. Yeah. Um, so let us know what you think in the comments. Um, our time's just about up here, so... Yeah, but to wrap up, like, no pressure, no forcing relationships. Take your time. Build a friendship. Let it progress at a natural pace, whatever that is. Yeah. Make sure it's right. Date for a reason. If you want to go have fun, go have fun without your children yeah. involved. Absolutely. I don't know. And it's you know serious. What? Yeah. You know what I'm thinking about right now while we're wrapping this up? Because yeah. I keep telling people to subscribe. Some people aren't listening to this. Some people are actually listening to this. Some people aren't actually watching this. Um, this is on YouTube on our Blended Life YouTube, but this is also on a slew of podcast stations as well. Um, so if you're just listening to this... We're legit. Give us a search on... Uh, Spotify. On Spotify. iTunes. iTunes. Google. Yep, Google Alexa. Play. Yep. But actually, you can watch this on YouTube and um, see the whole podcast that you're listening to right now. So give us a search on Blended Life and check out the blog written by Julie, which is www.theblendedlife.net. Yeah, check us out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and stay tuned for next week's episode, which should be awesome. We actually do a uh, premiere on each one of our YouTube video releases. And we will actually be there to chat with you guys and socialize with you guys and get your feedback. And half of tonight's episode was um, requested by you guys. So leave us comments, interact with us. We'll interact with you and let's be flashlight people together. Let's be flashlight people together. In all colors, all shapes, all sizes. Right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And uh, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Yeah, bye. Bye.